today we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Sunday, May 14, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. Philadelphia 76ers vs Boston Celtics. There is no way the Sixers can be happy with how they played in the fourth quarter of Game 6, Tatum making his shots or not. To have the league's MVP on your roster and you only score 13 points in the fourth quarter of a potential close-out game at home is about as disastrous as it gets for Philly. But once again, it's that invisible hurdle of trying to reach the conference finals that this Joel Embiid-era Sixers organization just can't seem to clear. A road Game 7 gives the Sixers one more chance at reaching the third round, but should Philly lose Game 7 in Boston, it will be the third straight year they've bowed out in the second round, Doc Rivers' era, and it will be the fifth time in the last six seasons Embiid's entire playoff career that they've fallen in the conference semi-finals round, three of which would be in Game 7s. Past failures don't necessarily mean there will be future failures in similar spots, but from a betting standpoint, it's tough to ignore the Sixers' history of losing in these spots, considering they are already heavily expected to do so catching plus 7.5 points. Philly got to stick their nose up as an organization at their 0-11 Sioux streak of winning Game 5 road games earlier in this series when they won Game 5 at a similar price, but doing so twice in a row in Boston and 3-4 of four in Boston for the series is a much tougher ask, especially if those demons from past losses in this round are floating around the headspace of Philly's locker room. For a while there, it looked like the Celtics were done. They had blown a first-half lead the Sixers took the lead deep into the fourth quarter. It looked bad for Boston, mainly because star Jason Tatum was having probably his worst game as a pro. He started out 0 for 11 and only had three points entering the fourth quarter. And then, like the greats do, he stepped up in crunch time, scoring 16 points in the fourth quarter to lead the Celtics' comeback. Tatum just hit one dagger three after another after missing his first 10 attempts from deep. He ended up with 19 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists and 4 big 3-pointers to lead Boston to a 95-86 win. I kept looking at the time Tatum said after the game, reported ESPN. I've got time, I've got time to make a difference. I believed that the whole time. Marcus Smart had a great game, leading the team with 22 points, 7 rebounds, and 7 assists. Jalen Brown added 17 points, while Malcolm Brogdon chipped in with 16. This is not just a Game 7, this is legacy-defining stuff at stake for both teams. For the Sixers, they have never made it to the conference finals in the Joel Embiid era, and another loss in his prime would be a massive blow. Doc Rivers has the most Game 7 losses in history and has lost something like eight straight closeout games with a chance to advance to conference finals. For the Celtics, a team many consider to be the best team in the NBA, a loss in the second round would be a major disappointment, especially at home. This game will be a war, and I just think 7 points is way too many to give up, even if CS win. Take the Sixers getting the points. You could easily see the sense of relief on the faces of the bench players for Boston when they saw their teammates pull away late in the fourth quarter in Game 6, as they knew they'd get another crack at extending their season. That was the main reason anyways, as the other part of that equation was that their superstar Jason Tatum finally got it going offensively just in the nick of time. Tatum's scoring barrage in those final minutes of Game 6 ended up being the deciding factor, and you can't help but praise the guy, even if his first 36 minutes of basketball in the game left much to be desired. So not only was Boston's joy about the possibilities a Game 7 at home brings, but the fact that they were able to win Game 6 with their superstar being far from his best. Tatum's shown too much skill and talent over the years and daily to his teammates in practice for those guys to expect much worse from Tatum in Game 7, and that's a tremendously uplifting thought for Boston and their fans. Boston already owns a 74.5% success rate at home this year, with their 35-12 SU record in TD Garden, 33-12 SU as a home favorite, and you pile the expectation that Tatum's only going to be far better in Game 7 than he was for the majority of Game 6, and it's hard not to like Boston's chances of winning this game outright. The point spread is the great equalizer though, and the Celtics 25-20 ATS record is home chalk, but expecting to win by 3 plus possessions in a Game 7 scenario can be a big ask. When I previewed Game 7 of the Golden State Sacramento series last round, I talked about how Game 7s in any sport are a fundamental under the total play for me because of two reasons. 
the hopeful lack of involvement from referees in deciding the game with numerous foul calls, possibly forcing a star to sit with multiple fouls or anything of that ilk in a game 7. It's really just human nature and you hope it plays out that way. The second is that all the players are willing to sacrifice everything defensively in an effort to limit goals or points against them. There may not be a tomorrow for their season, so you've got to sell out your body to take that charge, block that shot etc, because the fewer points you allow, the better your chances of winning are right. So even though Philly and Boston should be able to find a way to shoot the basketball much better after their 36% and 42% respective efforts in Game 6, shooting better doesn't necessarily mean the over is going to connect either. If a specific matchup sails over in a Game 7 scenario it is what it is, but there are just too many human nature factors in a Game 7 that lend themselves to unders connecting, with a desire to play defense on both ends, and the refs not out there creating easy scoring opportunities with numerous foul calls being a big part of that. The pressure of the moment can weigh on guys too, and you don't see too many guys that are engulfed by the moment filling up the score sheet. I see the words Game 7, and I already know I'll have a piece of going under the total, this game is no different. Our total pick is under 201.5 points.